Did you know you can probably learn how to forecast supercells, tornadoes, severe weather, thunderstorms, period, with just a little bit of knowledge that I'm going to teach you in less than 10 minutes. Are you ready? Now, well, let's get started. Now, before we get into actual tips, this is for someone who doesn't understand anything about this. And I want this to be like the absolute, like biggest disclaimer. This is also not a perfect method. And especially if you're someone who's wanting to go uh, photograph severe weather, this isn't going to get you all the way there, but it's gonna get you pretty close. And I think it's a good foundation to build off of, but also it's gonna let you know what the threat area is for any one area. We're gonna be able to talk, bring all these things together. It's gonna be really cool. Let's get going. Now your first stop when you're trying to forecast on any storm day is the Storm Prediction Center, that day one outlook. Simply navigate over there. You can see on there, there is a five point scale, technically six, because there's technically a general thunderstorm as well. If your area is highlighted in this, there is a risk of severe weather. You can scroll over, you can see tornado risk, hail risk, wind risk. I'm not even gonna try to explain like what the 2% actually means because quite honestly, I don't think anybody knows what it means. <laughs> I'm being serious. I'm being facetious, but also a little bit serious. I think uh, the definition of these outlook categories and such is different depending on where you go. But just know the higher the risk, the higher the probabilities of severe weather. But this is only your first stop. This lets you narrow in a zone to be looking at. Now your second stop, we're gonna to go to the modeling website, Pivotal Weather. There's a lot of great options out there. They're in the comments or the description uh, below. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of options, but we're gonna use Pivotal Weather today. Our stop is going to be very simple. I don't want you to overcomplicate this. You're gonna get on there and you're gonna see all these weather models. There's so many, there are so many. The, and it's getting worse. There's, there, you're getting more and more and more. Right now, as of this video, use the HRRR as your guide for what could happen. Now know the HRRR comes out every hour and it changes dramatically through the day. But let's navigate over to this product right here, Reflectivity plus Updraft Helicity. This product is gonna let you know where storms are forming today. The Updraft Helicity will tell you, that little streak right there will tell you if there is indeed going to be a storm that's spinning. This could mean a supercell for sure, but this is only stop one. Stop two, I want you to go to this chart right here, updraft to listy, zero to three kilometers. See these streaks right here? These are streaks that the model is modeling low level mesocyclone or low level rotation. Sometimes this is really prominent in linear kind of systems, but you can tell that in the stop before if those storms are in a line versus more cellular. But this is also a great way to see where storms may form and also be rotating. Now the next thing we're gonna look at, this is like, we gotta take, start off with the Storm Prediction out, Center Outlook, those updraft helicity streaks or reflectivity. We need to take all that into account. All that needs to be in context. Now let's navigate over here to Supercell Composite. Now this is highly simplistic, but I promise this would be highly simplistic. That's the point of this video. But where those storms are at and where those colors are brightest, where it's highest on the scale, it's the area where it's most favorable for the biggest severe weather. Now for tornadoes, do the same thing. Look for where the strongest zero to three kilometer updraft holistic tracks are. Overlay that with this, the significant tornado parameter. Where do these two line up? Where these two line up is probably a decent bet on where the most likely area, especially considering like keeping in context the Storm Prediction Center outlook, where these uh, storms are most likely to produce tornadoes. These four tools right here, they're gonna get you a lot of the way there in terms of being able to anticipate stuff for your local area, or if you're a photographer interested in uh, doing stuff, this is a good way to like kind of quick hand forecast. But there's a couple other things we can do too. Now, next up, I want you to go back to that supercell composite map. We've already narrowed down a couple of areas, right? We have, we've already narrowed down a couple. So let's pull a sounding. Simply click on an area that you're in within that area you're looking. Now, 
This looks completely foreign, right? Like, what is this? This is a different language. It is, in fact, a different language in a lot of ways. We've got a series of videos, set cards right there, but I'm going to point you directly to what you want to look at. The first thing you want to look at, the temperature is here, the dew point is here. Simply subtract that dew point from the temperature. What is the difference? If the difference is less than 20, tornadoes are certainly possible today because cloud bases are going to be low enough to make that happen. If they're somewhere 20 to 30, definitely can get a really photogenic storm, definitely a bit very severe. Anything 30 or above is when I start getting a little worried about a storm looking a little less impressive, but it still can happen, especially out here on the high plains. But just know 20 or below, good for tornadoes or favorable for tornadoes. Now, another thing you want to look at is this LCL and the LFC. You see it right here, just square right around it. This, you kind of want it to be as very close together as possible to show how, to show an air mass that's more uncapped, meaning you can get those storms to form and they can thrive. The less cap there is, the more of a chance your storm's going to thrive and also have a chance to produce a tornado. If this separation is large, you've got a lot of problems today. It's going to be hard to keep that storm going, uh, keep the intensity going, that sort of thing. So look for that separation to be as low as possible. Now, another thing right here, this is a great area to look at holistic values. I do not want to go through all the possible values. We're just going to look at effective SRH right here. And this, well, anything you see the scale coming up right here, the higher, the better simple as that, but there's the scale for your reference. And lastly, let's take a look at CAPE. We're going to look at ML CAPE, this area right here. This shows how much instability you have in the atmosphere. This is how we look at it in terms of weak, strong, moderate, etc. But also, I want to flip that. Here's a different way to look at this scale. That's, that's what you want to look for right there. So let's put it all together. First off, Storm Prediction Center. Look at where the outlook shows for severe weather, like, like where's there a risk of severe weather? Then you go to the models. You identify a couple areas within that that look a little more favorable than the other areas for severe weather. And then lastly, when you have those areas picked out, use the soundings and differentiate between them using those scales we talked about, which one has the best balance of all of them. And that, my friends, that's where most of the people are probably going to be targeting. That's how you do it. Severe weather forecasting in less than 10 minutes. We did it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, this is complicated, but you have now got a running start. You, you're going to be able to do cool stuff with this. Weather's for everybody. That includes you. We'll see you next time.